Welcome to Night Shadows. I'm Stuart Best. Where the paranormal is normal. Where that which you thought you knew, you didn't. And where the future can be known, if you know exactly where to look. Well, good evening, everyone. Thanks for tuning in and listening. We've got Larry on the top of his mountain there, hunkered down. How's the weather down there, Larry? Oh, absolutely the weather. Yeah, absolutely unbelievable, Stuart. It's uh, sunshine all day. It uh, warmed up some. It really felt great, and that's unusual for my mountain. And at the same time, it was odd. We had talked earlier, you know, it was odd. Uh, the sun come up a little bit further north than normal and went down a little bit different than the west, but also it went down early today. Oh, well, I didn't notice. I've been in front of the computer here. I didn't really notice that. But, yeah, you're right. Everything is abnormal. And um, we're getting pounded here. What is it? Winter Storm Riley. They're calling it now a bombogenesis, second Uh one. Pounding the East Coast, uh, leaving 1.4 million, it says, without power. 3,000 canceled flights. Five dead so far. So I guess there's going to be a lot of flooding, too, as I recall, right? Along Boston yeah, they, and those areas? Yeah, they're claiming that. And by the way, Washington, D.C. basically shut down which is really unbelievable, and there's a headline today, and I'd like your comment on it. It's AccuWeather. It says mm-hmm. extraordinary warmth envelops the Arctic as a strange polar vortex dislodges coldest air into the U.S. northeast and Europe and covers uh, England and Europe in uh, snow and ice and frigid temperatures. Well, how do I word this? We are approaching a pole shift. It's very, very interesting that uh, your wife was told. How do how, you, you want to tell that story? Because I think that's very, very important about Isaiah 24. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting. Matter of fact, both of us kind of slept roughly last night. We didn't have a good night's sleep, and and. Uh, it was very odd. You know, she woke up in the middle of the night, and the Lord had her go in another room and read her Bible and and pointed directly out to her Isaiah 24. And then this morning she told me about it, and and uh, that does involve a pole shift. And it reminded me so much of the uh, polar shift that, uh, you know, what I called uh, at one time the uh, white buffalo vision that I experienced and Red Elk uh, verified. Yeah. You want to... Bring the people up to date. I'm sure a lot of people never heard of that, but that was one of the most fascinating because when I interviewed Red Elk when he came east here, and and, uh, he was talking about what he calls an earth flip, but uh, there are evidently some preliminaries to that, and we're in the wobble. There's no question we're in the wobble. Uh, Can you explain that white buffalo vision a little more? Yeah, that was uh, a number of years ago, actually, when I was living outside Hugo, Oklahoma, right on the Oklahoma-Texas border, and I went out in a field, and I, you know, I, you know, saw a white buffalo standing there looking at me, and, and I didn't know what to say. I just stood there and looked, and it looked at me, and I, and I asked it, I said, uh, do you have something for me? And I was given this vision of a partial pole shift that occurred, and was you know, basically told that this would, the partial pole shift would be a warning. And then, uh, you know, when I talked to Red Elk about it later, you know, he described, uh, you know, a possible timetable and uh, said that he had had the same thing. And he felt like that's true, that there would be a partial pole shift that be a, would be a worldwide warning. And then later we would get the flip, as he called it. You know, he talked about a complete flip. And oddly enough, yes. I wanted to bring this up because it's very interesting. I found a, uh, a book for the youth, uh, you know, kind of like you had Danny Dougal, but this book was written mm-hmm. by Madeline Engel, L. Engel. Uh, it's on Amazon. It's called A Wrinkle in Time. And 
I, I got the movie of that. They made a movie about it. I didn't even know that, A Wrinkle in Time. And I watched it with Darnett last night. It was, you know, oh, wow, it was really incredible because it spoke of a darkness coming. Uh, it was coming to the earth, but it was also, uh, you know, in, in other areas of uh, the universe. And it had so much spiritual connotations and science and physics in it. It just blows your mind. Time travel and uh, dimension movement and all this stuff. Well, listen, I found another book that she had written a few years later called A Rapidly Tilting Earth or Planet. And so I'm going to look into that. But this all seems to be tying in to, uh, you know, what... I was shown and Red Elk was shown, and, of course, uh, you talked about it, and, you know, right back to Isaiah 24, which Darnett was given last night. Yeah, I I don't think there's any question that we do have a, a total, and I'm not talking about magnetic pole shift, and neither is the Lord in Isaiah chapter 24. He's talking about a either a crustal shift or a total flip of the entire planet. And uh, I'm just curious or wondering if this is somehow with that book you were talking about and darkness coming and all that, if it's not associated with the uh, galactic superwave that Dr. Paul LaViolette has uh, warned us about. And, of course, you can't see it coming. But there were some insiders who said that uh, in their space travels, and of course they can now go faster than the speed of light. I know a lot of people think that's total bunk, but too many insiders are reporting it, and the anti-gravity uh, technology is far, far more than anybody realizes unless they're an insider. So we have uh, some confirmations, and we have a number of confirmations in Dr. Paul Violet's book, Earth Under Fire, and uh, he talked about this galactic superwave. Then you remember there was a guy over in Europe somewhere who was a visionary, and he said that the Earth was definitely going to be hit with a, uh, a wave of some type, and it would change the spirituality of the people. And I, I, I firmly believe that it may have something to do with the the rapture of the of the church you find that in chapters two and three of the book of revelation and after chapter three you don't find it anymore there is no mention of the church and uh so one would assume from that that can sometimes can be a a bad word but one would think that that is telling us that they're there really is a a vanishing, or, or I don't know. I, I tie it sometimes to the sudden destruction. I guess we'll we'll have to wait and find out how all that works. But before a polar shift, a crustal shift, Isaiah talks about a wobble, like a top. It begins to slow down and then it wobbles, and I believe we're in that wobble. The uh, uh, Inuits up there who do all their navigation by the stars, the moon, and the sun, have said for the last couple of years that things have changed, and evidently changed considerable. So very, very interesting that he would be pointing that out to her at this point in time, unless it's closely connected to the prophecies of Billy Graham that soon after he was uh, buried and the services were all over, that we were going to enter into judgment. So what do you think when you tie that all together? Yeah, that's very interesting. I was going to mention also, um, you know, I remember well, and you brought back to my memories, you know, when you were talking about the polar shift, et cetera, uh, you know, the days when you were actually on Art Bell's show, because, you know, you recorded that, and every once in a while you actually give that radio program out for people yeah. to listen to, and, and it was really powerful. It was really good. And I remember when I was listening, Art Bell was really uh, <laughs> drilling you on the, the what kind of examples or symptoms the planet would suffer 
during, you know, a polar shift or a, a you know, this type of uh, catastrophic event. And I remember you explained all of that, and, and guess what? It wasn't long before Art Bell, after your interview with Art Bell, Art Bell and Whitley Strieber got together and wrote a book, you know. Uh, I think it was mm-hmm. like The Coming Global Superstorm or something like that. And then shortly thereafter, the Day After Tomorrow movie came out, which really entailed a whole lot of what you had described in your original Art Bell interview, and I was shocked by that. And I did watch, uh, by the way, uh, Billy Graham's funeral today. Very interesting, and and some uh, took some cliff notes and stuff. And and uh, yeah, yeah, there, on there's, that. yeah. What's interesting is the fact that uh, there are a number of people that really believe that Billy Graham may have been some type of timely Methuselah. That if you'll remember mm-hmm. a short time, you know, it was just a very short time after Methuselah died that the judgment came. And it's almost, uh, you know, if, if he's a type of, you know, here we have a type of Osiris, the Persian king, in Trump. Yes. And then now Billy Graham, possibly a type of a Methuselah, which would mean, Stuart, now we don't know the time frame, but it would mean that once he's buried, uh, uh, in a t- there'll be a time frame to where, you know, uh, judgment will come. And one of the things that, that str- I, you know, I studied that today and looked at that pretty close. And, the, you know, at that time, they, after Methuselah's death, they entered into the ark. Could it be yes. that those of us who have an ear to hear maybe that if Billy Graham is a spiritual or a type of a Methuselah, and we have a judgment coming shortly after that. Could it be that those that have an ear to hear now need to really get themselves and get their homes and families in order because we may have to really, really be locked in to the ark of our time, which we know is Jesus Christ? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know how I word this. Uh, as it was in the days of Noah, Jesus commented on that, said specifically, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be again. Well, that included Methuselah's death, the time frame from the death to entering the ark, and some claim they've done research on it, and it's seven days. So if we take today as the burial on the second, it would be the ninth, would be seven days later. Not that that necessarily means anything, but it certainly is a sign because the Lord always tells his servants what he's going to do next. And a lot of these people have had these visions that include both a uh, revival, so to speak, and also, however, judgment starts to fall. And we already know that Trump is the great revelator of corruption in our government, but at the same time, judgment. And I don't see the American people really helping Trump much, and I don't see any outcry in any of the stuff that's going on. All these deep state people are still running around, and nothing's being done to them, just a lot of rhetoric. So I would assume nothing is going to be done to them, and they will be out walking around until the Lord's judgment falls. However... The judgment that's coming, of which Trump may be a part of it, maybe not, he's starting to change. He's changing his position on gun control. Did you hear that comment he made? Well, let's just lock him up and uh, and take the guns, and we'll worry about the legal part of it later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I know he's frustrated, and I'm sure he knows that he really can't do that. But that is a mindset that the you have a couple or more of these false flags. That's going to be the mindset of an awful lot of Americans because they do not understand what's being done to them by these uh, um, mass shootings. That William Cooper, back in 1991, told us all about, that that's exactly what they were going to do. And that's exactly what they're doing. And now we're finding out that that sheriff down there, Israel, uh, he's deep state. 
has connections to Hillary Clinton, et cetera, et cetera. Don't you find it odd that these guys were told to stand down and then all the communications stopped? Communications oh, failed? I find, <laughs> yeah, I find that incredibly odd, Stuart, and they're even coming out with some information I've seen on the Internet that uh, that Sheriff of Israel is also has connections to CARE, which is a Muslim organization, you know, and uh, this all this all taps back into Hillary and, and Barack Hussein Obama. Yeah, and everybody couldn't, they just couldn't believe that uh, Obama is, uh, favors Islam and really hates Christians. He, he made that very well known by what he did and how he acted and obviously didn't attend <laughs> Billy Graham's funeral, which is making a very big statement. And uh, that goes by everybody. But, yeah, we're headed for trouble. Trump is definitely judgment, and I believe the, when the Bible says that judgment begins at the house of the Lord, uh, that's exactly what it means. And uh, you can see a, a big, big change in the attitude of people if we have two or three or four more or one huge uh, false flag operation killing more and more kids. Um, they go after the kids because of the emotional impact. You want to stop the sh uh, the, all these school shootings? Then you get rid of people like Soros and the Clinton Foundation and the Clintons and the Bush family because they're all connected into this. And if you don't believe it, folks, you ought to go read the genocide uh, concepts that they have of population reduction. They're right out in the open with it. So, I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I think you're exactly right. I find a kind of a phenomena here recently. Uh, you talk about population control or population reduction. We're literally having a reduction that's beginning to be worldwide to some degree uh, with this new influenza or flu type or flu like illness that is just a phenomena. I mean, it, it is still killing people. Of course, the news is not out there because. Uh, Trump and uh, the deep state and, uh, you know, Soros and all this other, you know, is, is controlling the news. But uh, it's still going on, and they're finding even – I saw research today I mentioned to you, Stuart, where they were overseas, that they were researching this strange flu epidemic, and they were saying that uh, that it appears that it also is affecting the brain and the, the mind, the memory – of people that this uh, that contact this flu, um, you know, and there's many that think this is a uh, genetic type thing, and some are saying a possibly a trial run for a later massive pandemic around the world. By the way, I did want to mention uh, yes. that I'd noted, and then uh, you know uh, Chuck today, and you know out in Alaska, and then uh, Augusto in Florida, and, and people in other locations are saying. Once this flu-like epidemic that we've been having got underway and the flu shots were no help at all, uh, we haven't had any chemtrails hardly. Something has stopped a lot of the chemtrail activity. Well, I did read an article, and I can't remember where it was, but the guy claimed that Trump had signed an executive order to stop all the chemtrailing. So either... He's interfering with deep state, or they're, they've done what they've done, and they're done with it pretty much. Uh, if this is a slow-moving uh, virus or nanobot, uh, I'm not sure everybody knows what a nanobot is, but they're very, very, very tiny, almost molecular in size, and they can be programmed. And we were talking about that before the show about how you uh, felt that this stuff was coming back, and it, you think you're getting better, and two days later, bam, you get in. That's what's happened to me right along. I've been at this now, what, four, four weeks and plus, and I no sooner get feeling good, and then all of a sudden I'm sicker than I was before, and you have to go back to bed. And... Uh, so 
people really need to pray about that. We talked about that. You want to brief us on that? Well, I can. Uh, there is a, a, by the way, I did want to say this. The Yahoo News post just came out, too. It says, new theory about the flu vaccine makes connections to the missing CDC staffer, Tim Cunningham, and the deadliest flu hit in a decade. And so there is some type of connection with this CDC uh, top staffer, Tim Cunningham, and he suddenly, when this pandemic seemed to strike the people across the nation, he has vanished. They found his car, with, and his dog was there, and his phone, but he was missing and has not been seen since. And one of the interesting things, you know, you know, I know you, you're on your about your fourth round of this stuff. It just keeps coming back, and battle after mm-hmm. battle. And my brother-in-law, the same thing was happening to him. And then uh, today, I, or last night and then into this morning, I began to feel worse again and like that was trying to latch back onto me again. And I took a, a walk. And just and I'm not telling anybody to believe this is the Lord. I'm just saying I took a walk, and I pray on my walk. And I prayed down the hill, and then as I was coming back up the hill after praying and just kind of seeking the Lord, uh, something dropped into my spirit that I needed to come back to the house and just take a stand in the spirit. And so what I did, and I just it was just it's just simple as this, Stuart. I came back in and began to pray uh, and bind. You know, I pled the blood of Jesus over myself, and and I I bound that that spirit of of influenza, and I, I also bound you know, and I hadn't planned on this, but I bound something. Called uh, you know this uh, viral nanobot that possibly mm-hmm. was in my body. I asked the Lord to liter- literally, to literally, Stuart, short circuit those things that might be within my body causing me harm, and that and to do it to the effect that they would have no further reanimation or come back to life and cause me any problems at all. And, Stuart, I felt bad all morning. And, listen, after that, I slept. I feel better. I'm doing good. You know, I told you my blood pressure is a lot better. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I can't tell people that that, you know, I can't claim anything. You know, maybe it was the Lord totally, and I didn't hear him. Maybe I did. But, you know, a lot of times, Stuart, we don't realize the power of prayer until sometimes we reach a place we don't know what else to do. Yeah, I, and, and we as Christians don't take authority that it was given to us as Christians. And as far as praying, uh, people should pray over their food. I'm not just saying, uh, you know, for, for the blessing and, and the thank you for the food. I was out in Montana, and these, uh, I don't know if they were licensed doctors or what, but anyway. I was put in contact with them by a friend out in California. And they have a machine that comes from Germany. And this was a long, long time ago. And they don't want to know anything about your medical history at all. And what they do is they scan your body. And they can tell you everything about you. What sicknesses you have had, it's all registered in your, in your body. Well, anyway... Uh, then they turn around and they destroy whatever they find. And it actually does work. This has been hidden away from the American people for ages and ages. In fact, I think the guy's name was Ralph R-E-I-F-E or something like that. And uh, I think he was murdered. But he had come out with something very similar and could destroy cancer uh, just by dousing your body with specific frequencies anyway they gave me a demonstration I could hardly believe it they put a plate of food out and they waved their you know their whatever you call that thing that registers the food and they showed us on the screen all of what it had then they said pray over the food and pray over the food that you change it to fit your body and your DNA structure. Have the Lord change it to fit you personally. The whole thing changed. They scanned it again, and everything was different. 
people don't realize the power of prayer. They really don't. And that was a real shocker for me. That's why when you pray over your food, you don't just thank the Lord for it. Obviously, you do. But ask him to change it to fit your specific body and change it as he must to do that. Big, big changes in the food. Because we are eating food we really shouldn't be eating anyway. Almost all of it is adulterated with all kinds of chemicals and additives and stuff like that. Well, that's one way to change all that. Anyway, uh, very, very interesting, isn't it? So if you have influenza or you get a headache and stuff like that, people really should check to make sure that that is not a satanic attack, a demonic attack. And all you do is uh, pray, you know, out loud, I suggest, that uh, if this is a demonic attack, a lot of people get these headaches and they pray that out loud and the headache is instantly gone. So there's tons of little ways that his demonic forces keep the Christians down. And he he attacks in every direction, as you well know. I mean, I've been in this for years, and and I can't tell you how many times <laughs> weird, weird, almost unbelievable things happen on a daily basis because that's all they try to do. They can't stop you, but they can sure harass you. And uh, anyway, that's a good lesson for everybody. I hope everybody takes uh, to that. And... Uh, Back to uh, Isaiah 24, I find that very, very interesting on the timing. Just like I found those warnings those people made about the false prophets and everything uh, and how there was no repentance in any of the messages anymore, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Why did they come out just days before Billy Graham died? So I think we're being shown things and we can't forget the star sign back in 923 we cannot forget the solar eclipse uh, over america et cetera, et cetera. all this is tying together don't you think i, be- I believe we're being warned totally get ready oh yeah Stuart, I, I i totally agree with you um the timing is just phenomenal i mean absolutely phenomenal and one of the things that's interesting, and I don't even know if you've had time to research it. You said you were going to check into it, but you may not have checked yet. But one of the things that struck me, because I'm an animal lover, uh, recently, <laughs> you know, just a few days ago, actually, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, he had an Alaskan husky, an adopted Alaskan husky. He'd had it for 12 years, and it suddenly passed away. It suddenly died. And its name was K A I A, Kea. And I don't know if you got to, you was going to look into that. And I had looked it up on a little name thing. It wasn't no big deal. It didn't give me much to go on, but it meant to rejoice. Uh, but that's all I found. But I, I didn't know if you'd looked into that. But the timing, everything that is going on, uh, you know, Billy Graham's death, his, his funeral, you know, all the time frame of all of this. And, and uh, the stuff with Israel and the time frames with all of that and, the, you know, the, the pivot we're in and, and where this is all going, uh, it's incredible. It's absolutely, a matter of fact, Stuart, there is so many clues and details of what is happening in this pivot, if you will. Uh, you know, you can't even keep up. Yeah, and we have uh, the Kushner peace operations and I guess – Saudi Arabia has been working on something, and my, I guess my only question is, are we going to have war before a peace agreement, or do we have a peace agreement that falls apart and then we have a major war? Either way, it's not very pleasant. Speaking about war, speaking about Israel, Syria, Turkey, Russia, uh, Russia has been, how do I say, flexing its muscles and Putin's dire warning to the United States, really, essentially, if you mess with me, I'll just, I'll take you out. And now he's got the missiles, I understand, to actually do that with this new uh, new stuff he's found. Yeah. And guess who yeah, gave him the uh... technology? <laughs> Hillary. 
the technology for hypersonic stuff was given uh, through Hillary Clinton. Well, like they, we they kind of reset. Yeah, they kind of yeah, reset with Russia, didn't they? Yeah. It probably dovetails into Uranium One, et cetera, et cetera. And, of course, we know they were given, Clinton was given all kinds of stuff to the Chinese. And when you go over there and look at their weapons, I checked their the war weapons that are being introduced. And this latest one from uh, Putin is really scaring our military because we can't stop it. These things move so fast you can't shoot them down. So there's no way to stop it. And Putin was bragging about that, uh, that I've got something here that levels the playing field. And if you mess with me, I'll just take you out. Now, that's coming from the president of Russia, if you want to call him that. I think he is the president, isn't he? Yeah, he's the, he's the president. And, you know, for him to make a comment like that, you got to stop and realize. Here, here's the... Uh, Here's a headline, The Unstoppable Bomb. Putin boasts Russia has developed an intercontinental nuclear missile that can't be stopped or shut or shot down by any country's defense system. Vladimir Putin said the rocket travels 20 times the speed of sound and has an unlimited range. Uh, it cannot be intercepted by any anti-missile system on the face of the planet. Newly developed intercontinental ballistic rocket with unlimited range has, is only one of several unveiled by the Russian leader in his state of the uh, address. Now, <clears throat> what people should be paying attention to with this is Isaiah, Jeremiah, 1551, and the book of Revelation, chapter 18. It's all talking about a, a, a nuclear missile attack upon the United States. Wasn't it Henry Groover that had a uh, vision of that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that, uh, matter of fact, Stan Dale had a large section of his uh, website the other day talking about this new uh, missile called the Satan II of all names. It was Satan II. Uh, and not only can it, uh, they can't even track it. They're not even sure where it's going. It's so fast, and, and it can weave in and out and uh, is stealthy. And, uh, yeah, we were, we've been, America's been set up. You know, you and I have talked about that, and during Obama's eight years especially, and that involves yes. Hillary Clinton, uh, America was set up to fail, and we're, I suppose we're in that process. Well, some time ago, I think his name was Gardner, and, I, and I, I think I put it in, in one of the Iron Mountain videos, but he made a comment. He said that the uh, New World Order would, be, it would either be accepted willingly by the United States or by force, meaning they would take us out if we wouldn't go along with it. And with what Putin has said, and uh, I've often said that I think Putin is the greatest chess player militarily we have on the planet. Uh, he's very, very shrewd, he, he, and he generally means what he said. And do you remember the press conference where he told the newspapers, you people stupid or what? You don't understand <laughs> what's coming. The Third World War is coming, whether you realize it or not, and it's, we're not going to be able to stop it. So there was a warning several years ago, talking to the world via the press from Putin himself. Look, we're going to have a World War III. It's unstoppable, and he knows it. And that's why they're putting all this money into developing these weapons. And remember what Jeremiah says. These so-called arrows with flame behind them have expert missile telemetry systems each one hits its mark exactly as a mighty expert arrow uh, you know bow, bowman i guess you call him uh marksman and jeremiah is very very explicit none miss their mark 
everything that's thrown at the United States hits. Uh, the lucky ones will be looking up and seeing a flash. The unlucky ones will be crawling through nuclear ruins, and you can thank people like George Soros, Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, Deep State, and all of them. They think they're going to go underground and save themselves. I got news for them. They're going to die underground, and it's not going to be a very pleasant death, and then after they're dead, they're going to wish they'd never been born in the first place. But you know, you can't tell people that because they really don't know the reality of hell. I, I saw a part of hell. I was taken there. You don't want to go there. Nobody wants to go there. But tons of Christians are going to go there. The Bible's very, very explicit about that. And, of course, he's not even talking about uh, the unbelievers. So, yeah, they're going to have their heyday. They want to do their mass roundups. They want to do their depopulation. And uh, I guess when they've trampled on the uh, last Christian uh, in glee and laughing and saying, we got rid of those idiots, uh, that's when they're going to look up and find out they made a very bad mistake. But, you, you know, you can't. Daniel says the wicked will never understand. They totally reject it all. They think it's all mythology. And I have to say the vast majority of Christians don't pay any attention to the Bible either. Or the Lord wouldn't be rejecting so many of them. But that's neither here nor there, I guess. But, yeah, I mean, when you get an announcement like that and you're seeing this kind of technology, and as I understand it, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's already in testing stages, I read. Is that right? No, it's already deployed. Putin has already deployed these units. Oh. Well, he's getting ready for war. Yeah, and, and I know and something that, that's really uh, interesting. Yeah, I was just yeah, going to okay. mention that something's really interesting about this. Also, is there's a guy that was uh, recently um, trying to see where where it, that's related that Dayo had uh, mentioned. A guy by the name of Stephen F. Cohen uh, with the Russian Institute studies. Uh, he said Cohen indicated now that he is more worried than ever. Uh, of a possible, and he says not a Cold War, but now he's worried of an actual war between the U.S. and Russia because he said everything is pointing to that. And if you'll remember, Stuart, when Trump was running, uh, you know, for the presidency and actually later after he became president, Trump had tried everything he could do to negotiate or even just talk with Vladimir Putin, but America or if you will, the deep state and the left would have none of that. They would not allow any negotiations. So it's almost like uh, Trump has no recourse uh, in where America's headed. It's like he can't even delay uh, a war that we seem to be headed right into. Yeah, I think so. Here's that statement uh, that you were just talking about. I've been around a long time. I've been following, both as a scholar and a public commentator, American and Soviet relations since the 1970s. I am more worried today about the possibility of an actual, not cold, but actual war between the two nuclear powers, Russia and America, than I have ever been before in my life, and that includes the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962, when we came very close. So that's what he thought. And that's an expert who's been studying this stuff for years. And uh, Henry Gruber had that in Red Elk also. Here's uh, from Sorcha Falls, so you can take it with a grain of salt. Putin threatens to reduce America to nuclear ashes. Warns, you will listen to us now. When you couple this kind of stuff with Jeremiah, Isaiah, the book of Revelation, People really should look, know that this is coming, and they're going to be the primary ones that take us out. Anyway, spoke to the entire nation, warning that if attacked with nuclear weapons, Russia would not hesitate to respond in kind. And he also said, I regard nuclear attacks on the nation's allies 
as an attack on Russia, too. And there have been reports that we're gearing up with some nuclear cruise missiles along in Europe there. Is, have you heard anything about that? There's some scattered reports, but at the same time, uh, we have moved massive, we've moved thousands of troops and uh, missile batteries into Israel, and that's not well known, but that's going on. We've already got them there, and they're deployed all across Israel. It appears that this Syrian conflict and and the uh, Russians, the Iranians, the Syrians, Hezbollah, uh, Gaza, you know, the Palestinians, Hamas, uh, the Turks, all of this seemed to be gearing up towards a big war against the U.S. forces and Israel and possibly some allies, but I wouldn't count on that. Wow. Anyway, uh, here we are, folks. Uh, what else you got, Larry? What else you want to bring up? I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> well, at the same time, we've got the same scenario that you've talked about before with North Korea. And I remember, you you know, some time back you said that North Korea literally could be a trap and North Korea yes. could be the first domino in the Armageddon, uh, you know, uh, situation there. And it appears, you know, that North Korea now, after the Olympics, has already begun more threats. Uh, you know, this thing is, is just not going to go away. It, it's There's a face down coming, and there are, there are scattered reports that we can't confirm that the war plan is already implemented, so to speak, and uh, we don't know the time, but there are some prophetic instances indicating and tying into the North Korean war situation, the beginnings of it, with the time frame of a funeral for Billy Graham and a little bit thereafter. Yeah, that's kind of worrisome because people have been reporting some military movements in the United States that kind of, uh, foreboding, I guess one could say, of of a war footing. We're going on to a war footing. And there's been a little leaks out of the Pentagon and from the uh, retired military that it looks like possibly we are going to hit uh, North Korea without any warning, which if Kim gets wind of that, he might just preempt himself. What's he got to lose? If he knows for sure they're going to hit, he's going to get hit. I mean, the only prudent thing to do at that point is to uh, preempt if you can, and I think that's what it, Iran's going to do. If Iran gets wind of the fact that Israel and the United States are going to lower the boom on Iran, they will most likely do a preemptive strike. And that would be in uh, Daniel chapter eight. And as you and I have debated for some time, which comes first, uh, Isaiah 17 and the elimination of Damascus, and then Daniel 8, or does Daniel 8 take place? Or maybe they're all almost simultaneous. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, very interesting because we we could be looking from the data we've been gleaning lately from the news especially reports over in the Middle East of, of, you know, Damascus, which would be an Isaiah 17 situation, and then, of course, uh, the Daniel 8 scenario, which could really come at any time uh, that, you know, because war is apparently uh, about to break out between Israel and Hezbollah in Lebanon, which would also tie in with Syria. And as a matter of fact, I saw a post yesterday from the United Nations claiming that... uh, that uh, we were right on the verge of a war starting between Israel and its northern neighbors at any time, and it would be catastrophic. So, you know, you're looking at Isaiah 17 and and Daniel 8, which could come in any scenario, I suppose, that it would play out in. But we're very close. Yeah, and we got the Armageddon script. The Chinese are rattling their sabers about the South China Seas. They've been uh, eyeing Taiwan there for quite a while. And then we got little Kimmy boy. And, and Kimmy, you know, he's, he's not stupid. And there's no question that he's getting help from the Russians and the Chinese. And I believe Korea, North Korea is a trap because why else would they be amassing the troops along the border 
why has Russia moved up all kinds of uh, military equipment on their little short border? I think it's like 12 miles wide, their border with North Korea. And uh, you got a lot of stuff going on that indicates they know a war is coming. You know, the logistics of supporting 300,000 troops is uh, stupendous, and let alone the amount of money it costs to do it. So, I don't know. I just think we're headed for uh, a total breakdown here of of trouble. And uh, getting back to a few things here, uh, I wanted to talk about the uh, pole shift a little more <clears throat> and what's going on with the sun. I think they're interrelated myself. Yeah, the the sun is being very anomalous. I mean, it's it's very strange what's occurring because, well, you know, I know earlier you had mentioned uh, the fact about the cosmic, uh, you know, super wave, yeah, inbound in- situation, and and uh, we know about the gravitational waves that are occurring, you know, around us, and and uh, also there's been some talk about a strange or prophetic wording about a strange energy coming from the sun. It reminded me a lot, Stuart, of when uh, years ago Stan Dale began to warn and talk about that the, the the sun was changing from a constant that we knew about to a very non-constant situation that and and doing and morphing uh, into ways you know and activities that we weren't aware of. They were new, and one of those things uh, Stan said that there would be the sun would begin to emit new radiations and new waves of light that we couldn't even see and be aware of, yet they would affect us and and, and the planet. And uh, he also talked about the fuel chains that might be upcoming and and all kind of stuff. And and what we're seeing now is really so strange, Stuart. We're we're being bombarded almost continually with a steady stream of charged particles from the sun that is affecting electronics all over our planet. I mean, it's affecting everything. Well, it's affecting the body electric, the people, you know, yep. the, you know, the animal life, all of the plant life. I mean, Earth is being bombarded by charged particles that we are not aware of what they do even. And uh, it's not coming as we would expect. It's not coming from uh, what we call the coronal holes exactly. It's not coming from CMEs and, the you know, plasma discharges from the sun and the the uh, so-called, uh, you know, the, the so-called uh, wires or whatever mm-hmm. uh, filaments on the sun that explode and send stuff your way. This is coming from a from our sun that has literally zero sunspot. It's coming from a blank-faced sun, and we are just simply not being told. And I'm not even sure they know, the ones that monitor NOAA and space weather and all of this other NASA, they don't seem to have any clues about what's happening, but it is happening. And you said what's happening with the sun, something very odd is occurring. Yeah, and the bots made mention, they called it sun disease. The sun gets sick, basically. It's a disease. But one of the things that was very interesting about the bots, and this is Cliff High, and he released that probably two years ago, said that uh, the words were showing up even back then that solar activity was going to get very strange, and he called it unknown cosmic energies and unknown solar radiation. Well, it seems like that's exactly what's happening. So, anyway, kind of weird. i got a headline here. I want your comments. Hundreds of birds suddenly fall from the sky in Mexico. This is not the first time that we've had hundreds, if not thousands, of birds just suddenly uh, fall from the sky. And this is in Mexico. Now, the official version is a mysterious disease. Well, how do you explain that this virus would kill, all of a sudden, hundreds of birds in less than 30 seconds? Here's my take on this, because it's <laughs> happening more and more. Do you suppose, with cloaking devices, that we have hidden craft, not very high off the ground, and these birds are running into it, 
or they're running into the radiation that surrounds it, and it's killing them. The only other op- option I have is they're running into some of these, uh, the bots mentioned these electromagnetic tornado type things. And of course, if a bird hit that, it'd just it'd kill it instantly. But what's your take? Why are these birds? I mean, they're all dying at the same time. Boom, 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 and they're all down. They're down. Thousands of them, in some cases. A clear blue sky. What are they running yeah, into? It, <laughs> yeah. Well, we had the very same scenarios over in Arkansas, pretty close to me here, uh, a year or so ago, and and. People were claiming that they saw what they, there was nothing appeared to be in the sky, but they saw flat to birds seemingly appear to strike something invisible and then fall dead on the ground from this whatever this was. And and another scenario too, I saw on Yahoo the other day. Uh, they had a photograph. They had a kind of an image of what appeared to be a, a triangle craft escorted with by two F-16. Jets. And, you know, I've seen something similar go over up here, and you know about them, too. And mm-hmm. uh, then suddenly the story came out that, oh, no, that was two F- <laughs> F-16s and a and a bird. You know, it was a bird was in the picture. And, uh, it was Big Bird. You know, yeah, well, you know, you remember uh, Richard Shaw and, and Stan Dale both, you know, have claimed that, you know, when we talked about Richard's filming, you know, the turkey you know, UFO and some of this other yes. stuff, that there are force fields or there are uh, waves that surround these craft uh, that, that you know, that do actually, uh, can do damage to, to adults even if you walk up against one or get too close to one. But that might also verify the fact that if this is a flying craft, as we know there are some, uh, it also could affect any birds that run up against it or in the area of it. Uh, yeah, I'm like you. I don't think a bird can get a disease in half a second and fall to the ground. I think uh, a disease takes a little while. But, uh, you know, they'll tell you anything if you'll believe it these days. Yeah, and some of these craft are huge. I don't think we have any idea how big some of these craft are. Uh, I think they're going to unmask one of these days. And the world's going to be just in total awe at what they see. But it's, it is curious because so they're hitting something. And we had a very odd sighting, I'm sure you saw it, over Milwaukee. Uh, if, it, uh, did you see the video on it at all? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Well, you know, then they tried to say those were seagulls. Well, seagulls don't leave <laughs> flaming trails <laughs> as these did. No. And uh, it was quite a display. And there is no explanation for it other than possibly a blue beam, Project Blue Beam display. I think they are experimenting with blue beam. I think they're refining it, getting ready for the grand, uh, you know, the grand display of the arrival and it'll be a blue beam pro- projection along with the messiah and uh, the, I'm, I'm sure there will be uh, real ufo craft embedded within the uh, blue beam projections 3d projections but they're getting really really good at this i've seen video on youtube of an aircraft flying along and all of a sudden it just disappears so that's obviously a projection, and uh, I don't know. It's just weird, but the technology well, is there, the, and it's going to fool people. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to mention. You know, you know, you mentioned the uh, anomalies, and uh, yeah. if you remember the old movie, The Core, and then also there was a, a science fiction uh, movie called Impact. Uh, that where they actually had uh, both of those movies actually had uh, animal you know birds falling from the sky because of of changes in the uh, yes. magnetic fields and the and the also the uh, you know there are many warnings now indicating this South Atlantic anomaly is on the move again and and growing larger and remember what Stan said and they seem to be verifying this that you know as time goes by we're going to have more than one anomaly. 
you know, where yep. we've got the South Atlantic anomaly. We're going to have them in other places like Canada and over the U.S. and at Europe. And he said that they're just going to suddenly begin to appear and all the radiation will pour through uh, all the way to the ground. And he said, this is just going to bend again to increase and happen. And so, yeah, you mentioned that, and that certainly is something we need to be aware of. Yeah, I think that's is, uh, you can have actually what they are is mini poles, north and south poles, and they, they form all over the planet. It'll be a beautiful display, but it's very deadly. Um, just before we close here, more mass casualty drills for Dallas, Houston, Anchorage, and Louisville. Will they turn into more mass shootings like Broward County? And they've got some uh, ads that have been put up. Now, there's no way to vet whether this is just hoopla or whether it's real. Crisis event looking for people. To play the uh, play the roles, uh, need 16 actor, actors for mass casualty event to take place. Exact address will be given later, and then they want you to sign up and they pay you for doing it. Uh, he's got a whole bunch of these that he's found. Crisis actors needed for Louisville, Kentucky. Looking for 20-plus individuals for a large-scale event due to be filmed in Louisville, Kentucky. Must look young. Uh, There's another one. Oh, by the way, um, the Bible Code, we only got a couple of minutes. Uh, Any more from, uh, we should get into that next week. But that was uh, time going forward and backwards. Yeah, it's very interesting, Stuart, and we can get into it next week. Uh, Barry Rothman's got a new one called The Arrow of Time. And let me read the names off real quick here. Uh, okay. Number one, past the arrow of time. Number two, the arrow of time. Number three, past. Number four, forward. Number five, dark. Number six, beginning. Number seven, universe. Number eight, to reverse. Number nine, matter. Number 10, star. Number 11, hole. Number 12, black. Number 13, energy. And it seems like, Stuart, this is almost like some type of a, a, a time device that goes fast forward or backwards, rewind, uh, you know, like a, like a DVD or, or some type of something like that. But Barry Rothman's really digging into this, and it involves energy and dark matter and, and black holes and all kind of stuff. It's phenomenal. Well, like I said, I think on one of the other programs, I don't think we have a clue as to the universe we're actually living in or how the Lord made time and space, which are obviously totally interconnected. But it's just strange that uh, we have all this now coming to the fore. I mean, the Lord talked about the door, the portal, uh, and all of that, and we just now are beginning to figure out what he was talking about and again, you're seeing black hole or kind of a portal or dimensional gate, uh, even in those words, really fascinating stuff. And uh, people, be aware, we are coming up on some really, really interesting times. And uh, if you're not ready for it, if you haven't prepared for it, you don't have food put away, you're going to be awful sorry. And uh, anyway, final word there, Larry. Oh, I just uh, have to tell people, uh, I just maybe need to remind people uh, the power of prayer. We we mentioned that a couple of times tonight. We don't often talk about that, but Stuart, uh, what we've talked about tonight, if that enlightens anyone or it, it, it's a witness to them, might try it, might try that power of prayer. Oh, it definitely works. Uh, The invisible world, particularly the worlds of the demonic forces, must obey uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. They don't have any options. They like to fight about it. But anyway, we'll get into that sometime and how the demonic forces work. Anyway, thanks a lot, everyone, for listening. And uh, we'll see you again next week, the Lord willing. Anyway, good night.